My name is Anna, and a year ago, I married the love of my life, Paul. Our relationship was everything I had ever dreamed of full of love, support, and laughter. I couldn't have been happier with how things were going. I work as an accountant mostly from home, and it's a job I enjoy. But there's more to my work life than people usually see. Paul runs his own car parts business, which keeps him busy, but we still have plenty of time together. We love spending our free time with each other, often going to parties with Paul's large group of friends, colleagues, and business partners. I always look forward to these events. I enjoy socializing and being part of Paul's world. One sunny Sunday morning, I was sitting at our kitchen table, drinking coffee and checking emails, when Paul came in with a big grin on his face. Hey, beautiful, he said, giving me a kiss on the cheek. Harold's throwing a barbecue at his place. Thought we could head over, have a few drinks, and catch up with everyone. You up for it? Sounds perfect, I replied, already excited for the evening. We arrived at Harold's house around 9 p.m. The smell of grilled food and the sound of laughter filled the air as we walked through the crowd. That's when I noticed a striking blonde woman I hadn't seen before. She was chatting with a group of people, her laughter carrying across the yard. Who's that? I asked Paul, nodding in her direction. His face tightened just a little. That's Rachel, my ex-girlfriend. Before I could say anything, Harold spotted us and waved us over. Paul, Anna, glad you could make it. Come on, let me introduce you to everyone. As we approached the group, Rachel's eyes locked onto us. Her smile widened, but it didn't reach her eyes. Well, well, she said in a voice that sounded overly sweet, if it isn't Paul and his wife. The way she said wife made it sound like a bad word. I forced a smile, not wanting to let her bother me. Nice to meet you, Rachel, I said. I extended my hand and said, I'm Anna. Rachel looked at my hand like it was dirty, then turned back to Paul. Polly, darling, it's been too long. You must tell me everything you've been up to. I felt annoyed at the way she called him Polly, but Paul stayed calm and stepped in. It's good to see you, Rachel. Anna, and I have been doing great. How about you? Still working at your dad's company. Rachel's smile faded for a second. Oh, you know me. I like to keep my options open. Unlike some people, I'm not tied down. The conversation dragged on, with Rachel making subtle digs at me while acting overly friendly with Paul. I tried to stay calm and not let her get to me, but by the end of the night, I was worn out. In the weeks after that first meeting with Rachel, I noticed she started showing up more often at our social gatherings. Each time, she seemed to go out of her way to make me feel awkward or out of place. One Tuesday evening, we were at a dinner party hosted by one of Paul's business associates. I was chatting with some of the other wives when Rachel walked over, holding a champagne glass. Oh, Anna, she said in that sugary sweet voice, that's an interesting outfit. I didn't know the librarian look was back in style. I glanced down at my kneeling skirt and blouse, feeling self-conscious. I think it's appropriate for a dinner party, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Rachel laughed, a sharp sound. Of course you do, sweetie. Not everyone can pull off haute couture like I can. I bit my tongue, fighting the urge to point out that her dress looked more suited for a nightclub than a dinner party. Instead, I excused myself and went to find Paul. As time passed, Rachel's behavior became even bolder. She started posting pictures from our gatherings on social media, always making sure to crop me out or block my face. The captions were always little digs at my looks or personality. One day, while scrolling through my feed, I came across a particularly hurtful post. Rachel had uploaded a photo of herself next to an unflattering picture of me. The caption read, Whose do you think is a better match for Paul? Vote in the comments. I felt my face burn with anger and embarrassment as I scrolled through the comments. Most of them were in Rachel's favor. At the end of the post, she had added, looks like the people have spoken. Paul must be a fool to have picked plain Jane over a beauty like me. That evening, when Paul came home from work, I decided to bring it up. Paul, we need to talk about Rachel, I said as he walked in the door. He sighed and loosened his tie. What's she done now? I showed Paul the post on my phone. His face darkened as he scrolled through it. This is unacceptable, he muttered. I'll talk to her and tell her to take it down. That's not enough, I said, my voice trembling a little. 
I want you to tell her to stay away from us. I don't want her at our parties anymore. Paul ran his hand through his hair, looking uncomfortable. Anna, I can't do that. She's the daughter of an important business partner. I can't just ban her from social events. So what? I'm just supposed to deal with her bullying me? I asked my voice rising. Of course not, Paul said, pulling me into a hug. Look, I'll talk to her and make it clear that her behavior isn't okay. But you have to understand, I can't completely cut her out without risking my business relationships. I pulled away from him, frustration building inside me. And what about our relationship, Paul? Doesn't that matter? Of course it does, he said, looking hurt. You know you're the only one I love. Rachel is in the past. I chose you, remember? His words should have made me feel better, but deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning of our problems. As I went to bed that night, I couldn't help but wonder if our perfect life was starting to show cracks. In the weeks that followed, Rachel's behavior became even more bold. At every party or gathering, she seemed determined to get under my skin and get closer to Paul. One night, we were at a cocktail party hosted by one of Paul's colleagues. I had chosen a simple but elegant black dress and felt confident and comfortable. That feeling didn't last long. Rachel walked into the room wearing a skin-tight red dress that left little to the imagination. Her eyes immediately locked onto Paul, and she made a direct path toward us. Paul, darling, she said, completely ignoring me. You look absolutely dashing tonight. Before either of us could respond, she placed her hand on Paul's arm, stroking it lightly. Care to dance with me for old time's sake? I felt my anger rising, but Paul smoothly removed her hand from his arm. Thanks, Rachel, but I'm here with my wife. Maybe another time. As we walked away, I felt a small sense of victory, but it didn't last long. Throughout the night, I watched as Rachel kept trying to get Paul alone. She'd call him over to discuss business or ask for help with some made-up problem. To his credit, Paul turned her down each time, always including me in the conversation or quickly returning to my side. But the constant attention from her was wearing on both of us. In the next few weeks, things didn't get better. Rachel's attempts to come between Paul and me became even more frequent and obvious. She would leave flirty comments on Paul's social media, always reminding everyone of their past together. At parties, she would talk loudly about their old memories, making sure to leave me out of the conversation. But it all came to a boiling point at our friend Scott's birthday party. Rachel showed up late, wearing a dress more suited for a red carpet event than a backyard barbecue. As she walked in, she made eye contact with me and smirked. Oh, Anna, she called out, her voice full of fake concern. Poor thing, didn't you get the memo? This isn't a library book club meeting. Laughter spread through the crowd, and I felt my face turn red with embarrassment. Paul, who had been talking to some colleagues, quickly came over to stand next to me. That's enough, Rachel, he said, his voice low and angry. You need to stop this childish behavior. Rachel's eyes widened, pretending to be surprised. Why, Paul? I'm just trying to help. Someone has to teach your little wife how to dress for these events. Before Paul could respond, I suddenly felt something cold and wet soaking through my clothes. I looked down in shock and saw red wine spreading across the front of my dress. Rachel stood in front of me, an empty glass in her hand, her face showing fake regret. Oh no, she gasped, how clumsy of me. Although, to be honest, that stain is an improvement on that dreadful outfit. The party went quiet, with everyone staring at us. I stood there wine dripping from my dress, feeling humiliated and furious. But as I looked at Rachel's smug face, something inside me snapped. You know what, Rachel? I said, my voice calm and steady. I'd rather wear this stained dress than spend another minute pretending to be civil with you. Your behavior is pathetic and embarrassing. If you'll excuse me, my husband and I are leaving. I turned to Paul, who was looking at Rachel with a mix of shock and disgust. Let's go home, I said. As we walked toward the exit, I heard Rachel's shrill voice behind us. Paul, darling, don't go. Stay, and I'll take good care of you. Paul didn't even turn around. He put his arm around me and said loudly enough for everyone to hear, the only person I want taking care of me is my wife. Goodbye, Rachel. 
As we drove home in silence, I couldn't shake the feeling that a line had been crossed. Rachel had shown her true colors, and there was no going back after this. One sunny morning, Paul came into our bedroom with a serious look on his face. Anna, I have to go on a business trip, Paul explained. It's important for the company. I'll be gone for about a week. I nodded, trying to ignore the small knot of unease in my stomach. Okay, when do you leave? Tomorrow morning, he replied. I'm sorry for the short notice. It came up suddenly. I forced a smile. It's fine, I understand. Your business is important. The next day, Paul left for his trip, and I found myself alone in our house. The week passed slowly. I kept myself busy with work to distract from the emptiness. On Tuesday evening, my phone rang. To my surprise, it was Rachel. Anna, darling. Her overly sweet voice came through the phone. I'm organizing a little get-together tonight, just a small group of twelve. I'd love for you and Paul to come. I hesitated. Uh, Paul's out of town on business, actually. Oh, what a shame, Rachel said, but she didn't sound disappointed at all. But you should still come. It'll be a great chance for us to bury the hatchet and start fresh. What do you say? Every instinct told me to say no, but a part of me was curious. I'm not sure, I said, hesitating. Oh, come on, Rachel urged. It's at Malizia Taverna. You know the place, right? Very exclusive. It'll be fun, I promise. At the mention of Malizia Taverna, I couldn't help but smile a little. All right, I said, making a quick decision. I'll be there. What time? Wonderful, Rachel exclaimed. Nine o'clock, don't be late. At exactly nine o'clock, I walked into Malizia Taverna. I saw a cheerful group of Paul's friends, 12 people, including Rachel sitting at a table. For a moment, I thought maybe everything would go well. But as I walked closer, my heart sank. There was no place set for me at the table. Rachel stood up, her eyes gleaming with malice. Oh, Anna, she said loudly, her voice filled with fake concern. I'm afraid there's been a misunderstanding. You see, we're full up here, no room for extras. She spun around showing off her designer dress. This is a place for people who belong, Anna. Beautiful people, successful people. Maybe you should try the diner down the street. I hear they make a great hot dog. The table went silent. Everyone looked uncomfortable, but no one spoke up. I laughed, genuinely amused by Rachel's pathetic attempt to embarrass me. Then, I turned and called out, Excuse me, could I speak to the restaurant manager, please? The manager quickly approached our table, professional and polite. Is there a problem here? He asked, looking between Rachel and me. Before Rachel could say anything, I smiled at him. No problem at all. I was just wondering if I could join this lovely group for dinner. The manager smiled kindly at me. Of course, madam. Let me get you a comfortable chair right away. As he walked off to fetch the chair, Rachel's face twisted with rage. Excuse me, she blurted out. I booked this table for twelve people, Rachel said, her voice sharp. She wasn't invited, and there's no room for her here. The manager returned with a plush chair, placing it at the table. I apologize for the confusion, he said politely, but Madam has the right to sit at any table she wishes. After all, she is the owner of Malizia Taverna. A collective gasp spread around the table. Rachel's mouth opened and closed like a fish out of water, while Paul's friends stared at me in disbelief. One of them, Scott, spoke up, but Anna, I thought you were an accountant? That's how Paul introduced you to us. I smiled and shrugged modestly. I am an accountant. I do the books for my restaurant. I've never been one to flaunt my wealth. I prefer to judge people by their character, not their bank account. Rachel's face turned a deep shade of red, a mix of embarrassment and anger. The mood at the table changed instantly. Paul's friends, who had stayed silent during Rachel's rude comments, now hurried to invite me to join them. Anna, please sit with us. We'd love to hear more about your restaurant, one of them said. I can't believe we never knew this about you. I raised a hand, smiling gently. Thank you for the invitation, but I think I'll pass. I just wanted to stop by and say hello. I turned to the manager and added, please make sure my husband's friends are well taken care of. The bill is on me tonight. As I prepared to leave, I couldn't resist adding, oh, 
and Rachel, there's a lovely diner down the street. I hear they do a great hot dog. You might want to try it sometime. With that, I left the restaurant, leaving behind stunned silence and a very humiliated Rachel. When Paul returned from his business trip a few days later, I told him about the incident over dinner. You should have seen her face, Paul, I said laughing. I don't think I've ever seen anyone turn that shade of red. Paul shook his head, chuckling. I can't believe she thought she could embarrass you like that. You handled it perfectly, Anna. As we finished our meal, I felt a deep sense of satisfaction. Rachel's attempt to humiliate me had backfired in a spectacular way, and it had brought Paul and me even closer together. Weeks flew by after the incident at Malizia Taverna. Life settled into a comfortable rhythm, and Rachel's humiliation became a funny story Paul and I shared over dinner. One crisp morning, as I was checking my emails, I noticed something exciting, an invitation to participate in the prestigious Entrepreneur of the Year Award program, specifically in the successful entrepreneurial debut category. My heart raced as I read the details. This was a huge recognition of all the hard work and success I had achieved with the restaurant. Paul and I decided to attend the event together. On the night of the awards, we dressed in our best. Paul looked handsome in his tuxedo, and I chose a simple yet elegant gown that made me feel confident and strong. The venue was amazing, filled with the city's most successful and influential people. As we mingled, I saw many familiar faces, friends, acquaintances, and several of Paul's business associates. The room buzzed with excitement. At one point, Paul left to talk with some colleagues, and I stood by the champagne fountain, admiring an impressive ice sculpture. Suddenly, I heard a familiar voice hiss in my ear. What are you doing here? I turned to see Rachel glaring at me, her face twisted with anger. I was invited, I said calmly, showing her my invitation. Rachel's eyes narrowed. This event is for the rich and successful people of the city. People like me and my father. You don't belong here, you upstart. How dare you try to fit into our world? Get out before you embarrass yourself. I stayed calm, looking around the room until I spotted the people I was waiting for. Smiling, I waved to two older gentlemen in sharp suits who were talking nearby. As they approached, Rachel continued her rant, but I ignored her. When the men reached us, I warmly hugged one of them. Dad, I'm so glad you could make it, I said, kissing his cheek. I turned to the other man and extended my hand, which he shook with a smile. Mr. Noah, it's wonderful to see you again. Rachel's jaw dropped as she realized who the second man was. She turned to him, her voice rising in disbelief. Daddy, what are you doing? How can you be friendly with her? She's just an accountant who got lucky and now thinks she's one of us. She doesn't belong in our world. Mr. Noah's face turned red as he listened to his daughter's outburst. His usually calm eyes were now filled with anger. Silence, he roared, making Rachel flinch. He gestured to my father. This man is Randy Savage, one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the country and my valued business partner. Your ignorant words could ruin a multi-million dollar deal. Rachel's eyes widened in shock, but instead of backing down, she pushed further. Then cancel the deal, daddy. We don't need to do business with her family. There beneath us. Mr. Noah's face grew even redder, anger boiling over. His voice rose, catching the attention of everyone in the room. That's enough. Your behavior is inexcusable. He pointed a finger at Rachel. From this moment, you're cut off. No more allowance, no more credit cards, and that luxury apartment you're so fond of? Consider yourself evicted. Rachel's mouth fell open in shock. Her father then turned to us, his tone softening. Mr. Randy, Anna, please accept my deepest apologies for this shameful scene. He turned back to Rachel. Leave immediately. You've shown you're not worthy of being here. At that moment, Paul pushed through the crowd that had gathered, his face full of concern and anger. What's going on here? He demanded. Before anyone could answer, he saw Rachel and shook his head in disgust. I should have known. Now I remember why I broke up with you, Rachel. You never learned how to behave in polite society. Rachel's tough exterior finally broke, and tears began streaming down her face, leaving black streaks of mascara behind. Daddy, please, 
she cried, reaching for Mr. Noah's arm. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Please don't do this. But Mr. Noah pulled his arm away. I have business to discuss with my partners, he said coldly, turning his back on her. Goodbye, Rachel. As Mr. Noah walked away with my father, Rachel stood alone in the middle of the ballroom, her shoulders shaking with sobs, mascara running down her cheeks. The crowd slowly moved away, leaving her standing there, completely humiliated. The rest of the evening felt like a blur. When it was time for the award ceremony, I heard my name called for the successful entrepreneurial debut category. In a daze, I walked up to the stage. As I accepted the award, I spotted my father and Paul in the audience. They were both standing, clapping loudly, their faces full of pride. Their excitement lifted my spirits, and I felt a wave of joy and accomplishment wash over me. In the weeks after the award ceremony, life found a pleasant new rhythm. The golden statue sat on our mantle, a quiet reminder of that unforgettable night. Paul and I continued to attend parties with his friends and business associates, but without Rachel's toxic presence, the gatherings became much more enjoyable. The atmosphere was lighter, the conversations more real, and there was more laughter. One evening, as we were getting ready for another social event, Paul came up behind me while I was putting on my earrings. He wrapped his arms around my waist and said, You know, I've noticed how much more fun these parties have been lately. I smiled at him in the mirror. I was just thinking the same thing. It's amazing how one person's absence can change everything. Paul nodded, looking thoughtful. Speaking of absence, have you heard anything about Rachel lately? I shook my head. Not really. She seems to have disappeared completely. Although, I did overhear Scott talking to his wife at the last party. Apparently, there's a rumor that Mr. Noah sent Rachel to another state. Something about not wanting her to embarrass him or the family business anymore. Paul raised an eyebrow. Wow, that's pretty drastic, but I can't say I'm surprised after how she acted at the award ceremony. I turned to face him, adjusting his tie. It's a shame, really. She had all that privilege, but she never learned to appreciate it or use it wisely. As we drove to the party, I thought about how much my life had changed over the past year. From dealing with Rachel's drama to the unexpected recognition for my business, it had been a whirlwind of experiences. But through it all, my relationship with Paul had only gotten stronger. And as for Rachel, I honestly hoped she'd find her way eventually. Everyone deserves a chance to grow and become a better version of themselves. Maybe her fresh start in another state would be just what she needed. For now, though, I was happy to enjoy this moment dancing in my husband's arms, surrounded by friends, and feeling grateful for the life we had built together.